Jay Kilroy back in the shop. And um, as you can tell, we're not in our usual spot with the windows behind us. We're over at the Bridgie Clone, the POS. And um, we are going to do a little work today. Um, you might remember these uh, in a past video link. Um, I used a form cutter to cut a groove in um, in a block just like this. This is um, this is UHMW, and um, it's um, approximately nine inches in diameter and a little less it's a 995 thick or a, I mean 0.955 thick and um, what I need to do in order to be able to cut that groove in order to be able to use that form cutter and hold it on, I have to be able to hold it on the rotary table so what I do is I drill three holes uh, on this plate so that I can mount it to the rotary table with studs and center on the uh, 5 8 inch center hole, mount it to the rotary table with studs, and then I can make that form tool cut uh, that you've seen me do before. So I've got two more to do, and the process I'm going to go through today is uh, laying it out on the mill here in order to uh, drill those three holes. Now normally, uh, a way you can normally do this is I've got a big, um, where is it? I've got a big eight inch indexer over there and I could throw the eight inch indexer up on the table, slap this in the chuck, take a random diameter because it really doesn't matter, drill a hole, index, drill a hole, index, and there you go, you're, you're in business. Uh, today, um, I'm not really feeling up to picking up the indexer and sticking it up here because it weighs about 120 pounds and uh, I want to take it easy on the back. Um, as Adam Booth likes to say, uh, save your back for the weekends, um, which is a, another way to say save your back for pleasurable activities, <laughs> not work. And um, uh, so I don't have a, a bridge crane. Well, actually, I, I do kind of, but <clears throat> I don't want to roll it around today. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to mount these down to the mill table here and we're going to use we're going to center it up and then we're going to use the bolt hole pattern functionality of the old shars dro um i i have to say that this uh for it's a sino brand which is a, you know an import brand it's sold by shars it's been a great setup uh it's the full three axis um Real easy for me to set up here and um, to get onto the machine, mount on the machine, and has, and has worked flawlessly. So um, we're going to do that, um, and this is how we're going to hold it down. We're going to um, hold it down with these uh, little um, rocker clamps. They look like um, uh, rocker arms. Got three of these here. We're going to hold it down to the table with. And then we're going to use a um, uh, just some you know studs and, and T nuts, and then we're going to center up uh, just by using the five eighths inch drill. This is the five eighths inch hole, and then we're just going to chuck the drill into there and center up this way. Um, that's plenty good for. We'll center it up with the drill, and then we'll go about bolting it down. Um, we're going to space it off the table, uh, you know, just in order to be able to drill through and in order to keep the uh, UHMW from getting real nasty. It's, it's still not finished to size, so there is one more cut to go on each side, which will clean up any nastiness that we get on there, but uh, there's no reason to push it, right? <laughs> and there's a whole lot that has to come off the diameter, so about an inch has to come off the diameter. So, um, you know, it can get a little dirty, but we don't want to push it. So I'm going to bring the camera in closer here, and we're going to get started. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get set up here to drill these holes to center up. We're going to take our table cover off. Um, we're going to slide our studs in here in order to clamp this down. 
Uh, I guess we'll drill kind of like this. So we'll set our supports up like so. All right. Roughly, get our high tech centering tool. Usually on UHMW, you drill under size, uh, so it makes for a real nice fit. Let's see, that's nice and snug. Like that. Ports positioned here. And then we're going to use our rocker clamps. Now I'm not putting rocker clamps down here because this is where the whole two holes are going to go. So uh, this is more than enough. Um, with UHMW, you don't want to clamp too tight because it would deform the workpiece, but it's slippery, so you need to be able to hold it fairly secure. So let's get the nuts on here. For the time being, these are just going to be hand tight. That is it. So we are centered up and we are clamped down to the table. Now we're going to get set up on the DRO and we're going to use the uh, bolt hole pattern function to drill our three holes. All right, so here we are. We're set up at the DRO. We're going to uh, knock out our bolt hole pattern and um, get zeroed up here. And um, so, first thing we're gonna do is I'm already zeroed on the center of the hole. So we're gonna choose the bolt hole pattern XY. And you got some choices here, the plane you're gonna work in, working XY, enter. Center position is zero, zero, enter. And then diameter, we're gonna do the five inch diameter, enter. Number of holes, we're gonna do three, enter. Starting angle, okay. You would think that starting angle zero would be on your y-axis straight back towards the column of the machine, but that's not the case. Uh, the starting angle is actually on the x-axis. So what I'm gonna do is I'm enter a starting angle of zero, of 90, because I want to come around to the top. That's where I want my first hole to be. Enter. Next. Now my next ending angle, I'm going to come, I'm at 90. I'm going to come around to 180. I'm going to come 120 down from 90 for my first hole, which is 210. And then my next hole is going to be 330. enter hit down arrow and then my first hole is straight back along my y-axis straight up all you do is crank until you get to zero or thereabouts All right, so let's knock our first hole out. All 
right, that's our first hole. Next hole, number two. So we're going to come down three inches. Let's zero that out. Close enough. So this is our second hole. Then our third hole. We'll stay on the same. Too far. Good. All right. You hit down arrow again, it says over. There you go. If you want to repeat the process, which I do, all I got to do is hit up arrow and go back recenter my next workpiece which I will do off camera and then I will drill it away Okay, now we're going to set the um, blank up on the rotary table to cut. What I've done is I've made this little plug here that um, centers the piece. So take my little studs here, run them in. And then I've got some nuts that use as spacers to space these up off the table. Next size up, these are 5 16 studs, these are 3 8 inch nuts. There we go. We'll take the blank. And this can be kind of tricky, but not a big deal. Now make sure we're centered on our centering stud there in the middle. There we are. I'll take a wrench and touch that up. But first, we'll go mount it over on the big KT. All right, we're over on the big KT. We got the rotary table mounted back up. We're going to cut a couple more of these discs. But the first thing we got to do is we got to bring the cutter, which is back here, 
to the work piece, which is here. But you'll note that I've got a uh, vise mounted, and I can't run my table far enough back in the Y in order to make that reach. I can, I can get close. But no cigar. Close enough. The beauty of this mill is that the overarm support is also the mount for the uh, overhead of the vertical head and for the motor for the vertical head. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to kick this out uh, real similar to like a turret mill, except it doesn't turret. If it twisted, it would be mind-blowing. But let me show you how that works. Uh, just like on your bridge port, there's a couple of nuts here. these up. You don't get them too tight because it's a lot of, a lot of weight that this the overhead arm and the head probably weighs as much as my bridge port. So there we go. So we brought our uh, cutting head out and now we just need to come up and uh, we're in business. Now I can bring it up, I can uh, extend it up with the knee, or um, this vertical head also has an extending quill with a depth stop right here. Uh, I am not going to, right here, I can extend it a little bit, I guess. Right, locked. This is not a fast acting quill, this is the exact opposite. you can lower the quill down. The quill has about six inches of stroke. Um, and it is calibrated on the dial over here. And there is also a, uh, a uh, calibrated depth stop knob up top. So you can set to a depth. I certainly don't think I would ever want to use it in the middle of a cut, but uh, you know, it, it's there if you need to do something goofy. So I'm gonna bring the, um, camera back over we're going to get set up for the cut all right we got a little live action here my assistant james thomas kilroy the third my son there is busy cranking the handle we're making a scratch pass just to see if we're in the center keep cranking son for the duration of this film Thomas will be known as Power Feed. You're right, son. That's exactly right. Keep cranking it. All right. We're looking good. Keep cranking, son. Dial in a little cut. Crank it faster, Thomas. All right. Come on, power feed. Keep it up. 
There you go, that's a good speed there. That's that. That baby is cut. We have made lots of Christmas decorations and um, 
There we go. Go ahead and clean up. 